All right, back this week for part two of the Q&A series. If you missed part one, I'll link it in the description below, but we're back with part two. Lonnie Eagleton here, Mila Eagleton is sleeping. Maybe she'll wake up in a bit, we'll see. But uh, yeah, let's get into it. What is your third favorite color? Such a great question. <laughs> let's see, my third favorite color is probably green. What is the best guitar for a beginner? I would say start on an electric guitar because acoustic is a lot harder to push the strings down. Um, it takes a lot more finger strength and it's a lot more difficult to play when you're first beginning. Uh, even when you're a professional, acoustic is a lot more difficult to play. So I would start with an electric. And basically what I always tell people is just find a guitar that you think looks cool. Something that you want to pick up, something that inspires you to play it. Because if you have a guitar that's like some some color that you don't like, or you don't like the shape of it, you're gonna be less inclined to pick it up. And really at the beginning stages, that's the most important thing, is you just want to be inspired to play it. So find something cheap, because quality doesn't matter at the beginning stages. Just find something cheap and something that you think looks cool, and start on an electric, if possible. That's what I'd recommend. But at the end of the day, as long as you're playing, uh, that's really all that matters. So if, like, let's say an acoustic is all you have, don't let that stop you. But yeah, that would be my advice. What was your first guitar and why did you choose it? So my first guitar was a Squire Strat. It was a white Squire Strat, which I actually still have, and you've probably seen it in uh, some of my videos, actually. I still have it. I've scratched off the Squire sticker and I've changed it to a Fender. Don't tell anybody though. And uh, yeah, I've upgraded like all the components in it over the years. I put in new pickups, new bridge, uh, new nut, new tuners, new volume pots, um, yeah, fret dress. The, the whole thing has basically been redone, but it's got the same body and neck. So yeah, that White Squire Strat was my first guitar, and it was actually a Christmas present uh, when I was 13. Favorite song to play? I've always loved playing the riff for Black Dog by Led Zeppelin. <laughs> Such a great riff. Um, if we're talking in the Black Veil Brides tour set, probably the Legacy because it's got the bass intro. So I, I love rocking that one. How are you doing? I'm doing great. What is something unconventional that you're super passionate about? Um, I'm an avid water skier. Really love water skiing. Uh, I've been doing it ever since I was a kid. And I feel like that's a pretty niche thing, you know? Anyways, yeah, I, I love water skin. Would you ever get a scene kid haircut? I feel like I kind of had one at this time last year. Or maybe that doesn't count. I don't know. We'll see. Right now I'm growing it out. That's why I got my hat on, because it's just a mess. I'm, I'm trying to grow it out as long as I can before the tour. And then right before we go on tour, I'm going to get it tr uh, cut and styled to whatever length I can get it to. But yeah, I'm going to try and go long again, like over the years kind of thing. What song were you most excited about on Restitch These Wounds? Um, I guess Knives and Pens, you know, just because that one's such a classic. So it's cool to hear it redone. Uh, kind of the song that started it all. But I don't know, that, that, that whole album turned out pretty good. And I, I really loved the, the playthroughs I made for that too. How's sculpting going? Not good. Um, so I made one sculpture last year and I got it right here. So I sculpted this eagle right some of you know that and I loved it so much and then I do want to do more the problem is right after I finished this I started doing YouTube right I started making regular YouTube videos which take up any spare moment of time I've ever had so I haven't had a chance to sculpt since this eagle but I'm just I am dying to do more you know um, I'm probably gonna make a trip up to Whistler in a few weeks which is a city near Vancouver where they sell the stone to make these and I'm planning on buying another piece of stone and starting my second one but yeah so far this is the only one I've done but there will be more in the future how are you feeling with the upcoming tour yeah just can't wait you know it, it literally can't come fast enough uh, I haven't been on tour in a while so it's gonna feel so good to get back out on that bus and just start playing music in front of people again uh, literally literally can't wait so excited for it where did you get your m, &M mugs yeah, um, I got this, and my wife Rita has a matching one too, and we got them in New York City. There's an M&M store in Times Square, 
So we got them there. We went to we went to New York City for my 27th birthday a couple years ago. And uh, yeah, these were our souvenirs from the trip. Now, not really a question, but I find your voice really soothing. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you find it soothing. You know, what's funny about these mics is the closer you get, the more bass there is, right? If I back off here, you get way less bass. Check, 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 check. Then here it's all bassy. When you hear those guys who do like the movie trailers, like coming soon, it's like they're right up at the mic, you know? And I mean, they do have probably pretty bassy voices to begin with, but that's really how they get that technique, right? This fall starring Will Smith or, you know, whatever the, <laughs> whatever the trailer would be. But yeah, that's how you get that bass frequency, like boominess is you get right up on the mic there, as opposed to back here where it's, you just sound like a regular, regular person, you know? What can you say about your war paint? Um, I can say that I think it fits my face pretty well. I think it looks cool. Um, although it, I can tell you, it definitely it won't work with the beard. Can you imagine just like the lines running into the beard? It would just be the worst thing ever. <laughs> so, my plan is to keep this beard, this off season beard growing up until the first show. And then I'm going to shave it off right before the first show. And it's going to feel so clean. But yeah, that's what I would say. War paint and beards don't mix. What is your favorite bass line of all time? Um, Seinfeld. I guess. No, just kidding. That's actually played on a keyboard, if you guys didn't know. The Seinfeld opening theme is just played on a synth. It's not even played on a bass. Such a scam. Um, but let's see. Um, I always like the opening bass part to Sweet Child of Mine. I think that's super creative. Also, the opening bass in Ramble On by Led Zeppelin is, is super iconic. Um, yeah, I don't know. Hard, hard to choose. Actually, no. I'd say if I had to pick one... Um, the song Something by the Beatles. Check that out. There's some wicked bass in that. A lot of people don't know it, but like the part when he's like, don't wanna leave for now, it's like, boo, do, 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 do. There's just some great bass in that song. So yeah, check out Something by the Beatles. I, I love the bass in that. That would probably be my favorite, my favorite bass stuff that I can think of anyways. All right, guys, that's gonna be the end of part two here in the Q&A series. Thanks for watching as always, and be sure to drop a comment. Let me know if you found anything particularly interesting in the video. Uh, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts, and uh, stay tuned for part three coming out very soon. Take care.